Tesla has just revealed their new humanoid robot, Optimus Gen 2, which will finally be able to take over repetitive tasks from humans. In the past, we had specialized robots with pre-programmed actions that have now transformed into robots with general intelligence. Google's RT2, now called the RTX, for example. It began as a high-capacity vision language model, which is a type of large language model that learns from both web and robotics data and translates this knowledge into generalized instructions for robotics control. It is like GPT-4V. This super smart model can understand vision, language, and action all at once, which is like making machines think more like humans. But instead of using ChatGPT, Google has developed models of their own. They started with Palm and then transitioned to Gemini, but the core idea remains the same, to use large language models with vision capabilities. Google's taken it up a notch and given it the power to control robots, and that's how their robotic transformer 2 was able to translate knowledge from its training corpus into commands for robotic control while keeping its massive web-based capabilities intact. In simpler terms, imagine if we showed GPT-4 or Gemini pictures of a maze and asked it to navigate through it. Instead of guiding it step by step, the robot figures out how to move through the maze all by itself by translating text instructions into actual actions. This shows that AI isn't just scripting robots, it's taking the reins and making them do things autonomously empowering them with the ability to learn, adapt, and execute tasks similar to human cognition. In fact, NVIDIA's research team recently revealed Eureka, a revolutionary approach for teaching robots that taught a robot hand to spin a pen just like a human can. The special rewards made by Eureka help robots learn by trying and making mistakes. These rewards are better than what smart people could make for about 80% of the tasks, making robots 50% better on average. Usually, humans make these rules for robots, like saying good job when they do something right. But Eureka takes this to a whole new level. It uses its brain, based on GPT-4, to create these rules in a 3D world where robot hands are learning stuff. Then, it looks at how well the robots do and keeps making those rules even better all by itself. What's really cool is that Eureka's rules are often way better than what humans come up with, especially for tasks that are relatively difficult for humans. Eureka uses NVIDIA's physics simulation environment for reinforcement learning research called Isaac Jim, which is an end-to-end high-performance robotics simulation platform to check if its rewards work well for lots of tasks. It looks at the results and tells the AI how to make even better rewards. This makes Eureka smarter all on its own and has taught all sorts of robots, from bipedals to cobot arms. And just like Eureka, Google DeepMind has also been working on a computer program called AlphaGo that is more or less based on Eureka's principles. AlphaGo is a type of AI that plays the ancient Chinese board game Go, which was the first ever computer program to defeat a professional human Go player, Lee Sedol, in 2016. This victory was a milestone in artificial intelligence, as Go is considered one of the most complex games in the world, and what shocked everyone was how it was able to achieve it. During the game, it made an unexpected move in the upper right corner of the board, which initially puzzled human players because it seemed to prioritize an area that typically wasn't the main focus. However, this move, known as the shoulder move, later revealed itself to be a strategic stroke of genius. It secured a crucial territory advantage for AlphaGo, eventually contributing to its victory in that game. In the way. And so the value here is relatively small because it doesn't spread out and also because these stones, if Black chose to play a lot of moves on the right side, he would not have the added value of having, a, say, a, an attack on this group because okay. it's so strong. And so that's one, something you look for. And it changes the value of an area when you have a strong group like this because Black doesn't have any point to approach it because it's so strong. And this is what uh, Thore from the, uh, from the Google uh, team was talking about, uh, is this kind of, of evaluation. This showed that while humans stick to their usual strategies, AI can explore new ways to win. Move 37 wasn't just about winning a game. It made us rethink how smart machines can be, even smarter than us sometimes. Over the next five years, it won't be business as usual. Teams at NVIDIA, Google DeepMind, OpenAI, and elsewhere are fundamentally altering how we approach building robots.
Instead of humans doing everything manually, writing every piece of code or instruction, we're creating these neural networks, these brains, that are way better at devising and improving robots than we could ever be. And this shift is driving some groundbreaking discoveries and advances. It's interesting how Tesla operates differently in terms of research transparency compared to NVIDIA, DeepMind, and OpenAI. While those companies are more open about their research, Tesla seems to keep their development more under wraps. But considering the speed at which they release their technology, it's plausible that they had some groundwork laid out already, leveraging similar technologies used by other tech giants. In the past, robotic advancements felt like a distant future thing, but with these recent breakthroughs, especially with tactile sensing and nuanced movements, it seems like we're on the brink of a massive shift. Just as ChatGPT was a turning point for AI understanding, 2024 might be the turning point for robots, and we might start seeing them everywhere. Of course, it won't be overnight like software updates, but steadily, they might just emerge into our reality. Now, coming back to Tesla's humanoid robot, there's a lot to talk about. This bipedal robot can not only walk independently, but it can dance and manipulate physical objects as well. According to its official bio, this robot is a general purpose, bipedal humanoid robot that is capable of performing tasks that are unsafe, repetitive, or boring. Optimus Gen 2 is designed to replicate human movement. With actuator integrated electronics and sensors, mobile neck and hands, and torque sensing feet and tactile finger sensors, this robot has a complete end to end trained neural network. Overall, this new version is way better than the first one shown at Tesla's 2022. AI day. It's got better balance, moves faster, is lighter by 10 kiyu, and its hands can do more things. In a recent tweet, Elon Musk posted a video of Optimus Gen 2 doing lots of stuff like walking, dancing, and even picking up an egg without breaking it. And even though we still don't know when it will be out or how much it'll cost, Musk says it'll be way less than $20,000. Because the thing is, the market for humanoid robots, like Tesla's Optimus Gen 2, is growing fast, and experts predict it'll go from being worth $1.8 billion in 2023 to a whopping $13.8 billion by 2028. As we just talked about, the Optimus Gen 2 is getting attention for its ability to move like humans, especially with its hands, because it uses 11 DOF and special sensors on its fingers to handle things really carefully. However, at the same time, there seems to be some competition in the market. There's another robot, Phoenix from Sanctuary AI, that's even more flexible with 20 DOF in its hands. Phoenix can do lots of tasks, like scanning things, soldering, and serving food. The bottom line is that different robots have different strengths. Boston Dynamics Atlas, for instance, is great at quick moves and can lift, carry, and parkour. It's about 1.5 meters tall and weighs 89 kilograms, making it a beast. But then there are also robots like Sophia and Ameka, known for their human-like expressions and talking skills. Elon Musk says Optimus stands out because they're making it to be mass-produced, not just as a one-time experiment. So it's different from other robots focused on research. So, what do you think? When will robots be able to replace humans? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications for more updates like this. We'll see you in the next one.